Okay, folks, uh, welcome to uh, the home of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce. I'm Steve Rosansky, President and CEO of the Chamber. Glad you can make it out here today uh, for the uh, presentation uh, that we have for the congressman. Uh, sorry about all this sun. I was hoping earlier it would be a little more overcast. You usually get the June gloom that extends into July, but uh, as you can see, it is a Chamber of Commerce day here as usual in Newport Beach. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Vartan, and I'm going to mess this up, Jahanian. Jahanian, yeah. did I get that right? He's the manager for the Western Region of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and he's going to introduce uh, the congressman and present his award. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks, Steve. And thanks to all your team here at the Newport Beach Chamber, Steve, for putting this event together. They, they pulled it off in a very short period of time, so we're, we're very grateful. We're also very grateful to all the city council folks who came out and all the other chambers that have been participating today. Um, one of the really fun parts of my job is to be able to help recognize members of Congress who have been outstanding advocates for the business community in Washington. And today, uh, I'm very, very pleased to be able to help uh, present this award to Congressman Rohrbacher for all the terrific work he's done. This award, the Spirit of Enterprise Award, is presented to members of Congress who have scored at least 70% on our score scorecard that we release every year. And I'm very pleased to say that the Congressman has not only met that 70% threshold, but he, he hit 92% last year. So that's a very, very big accomplishment. Some of the, some of the votes that we looked at last year included initiatives to help small businesses Get, um, get small business loans, also in helping prepare the workforce for the skills that they need for jobs of the, the, of the 21st century. So there are some very, very important initiatives. I'm very lucky that I had a chance to spend some time in Washington where I got to see Congressman Rohrbacher really work firsthand in, in fighting for lower, lower taxes and smaller government. And I know that every day he's back there, he's working really, really hard for his constituents out here. So it is really my privilege to be able to present this award to him today. Congratulations, Congressman Rohrbacher, and thank you so much for your support. Oh, God bless you. Uh, years ago, uh, I, uh, an older member of Congress pulled me aside when I was uh, just younger and uh, more of a, of a freshman. And uh, he told me, he said, uh, Dana, just remember this, that when you're making your votes and you're setting your policy down of what you're going to stand for, the people who agree with you, they will be very pleased with you. But the minute that you do anything different than what they believe, they'll forget all the uh, everything good that you've done, and they will only remember that one thing. Well, today, thank you to the chamber for saying that for 92 percent of the time I've been with you, and not and not and not calling me in to say why weren't you with us at eight percent that was left over. So thanks a lot for this is typical of of America. We're looking and that what Ronald Reagan taught us. Look, accentuate the positive. Find out where you can work with people and work with them. And uh, I have, uh, let me just uh, note, uh, uh, I have two things that I would like to mention to you while I've got you here. I'm sorry that those people there believe they have a right to disrupt other people's rights uh, to assemble and to speak. But we'll, I'll try to speak very loudly so you can hear this. I've got two proposals now that I am pushing in Congress that I think have a lot to do with what you would like to see done. Number one, I know that we need this year to pass a health care bill this year, not, not right now. We should have been working on a lot, lot sooner, but by the end of the year, we need a health care bill, and by the end of the year, we need a tax bill. So I wanted you to know what I've been pushing for for that health care bill and tax bill. Number one, the health care bill. Uh, I happen to believe that the, what's the driving force behind what happened with what, why we even have Obamacare is because the American people have come to the conclusion they will not accept that Americans are going because they've been priced out of the of the health care market with by because they have a precondition 
that those Americans will have to go untreated and, and will be sick in the streets or whatever. So we know the American people have good hearts and they're not going to let that happen. But at the same time, we know that if you have a precondition, that it causes the rates to go up in the insurance industry that runs this health insurance. So the Rohrbacher solution, and it has to be very understandable to the American people because the Democrats are going to lie about whatever we're proposing and make it sound like we don't really want to achieve the goals that we set out for. My solution is very understandable. Someone with a precondition, someone with a precondition can go to the doctors, but it will be paid by Medicare. Medicare will handle preconditions predicated on that that person getting a precondition taken care of has to buy insurance for the rest of their health needs. Now we have millions of people who now can't get insurance because they have one precondition. They have a precondition. Well, we will, we, by, with my plan, if it's implemented, we will bring millions of people back into the insurance market where they are insured because without that uh, precondition, their health care cost goes down. And now they're put in with the rest of the regular people or without preconditions, and thus health care insurance for everything except preconditions will go down. Now, and we as a people, I think, agree. We're not going to let people out, you know, just be ta not taken care of because they have a precondition. We're not going to do that as a people. So I have suggested that it's bifurcating the preconditions from all the rest of the health insurance. And that will make that health insurance affordable, and that will make sure that the people of this country have faith that we, we, that we are keeping faith with them even when they get sick and infirmed. So that's the Rohrbacher plan for health care. I've, I've, I've been lobbying this all over Washington, spoken to the top people as well as in the White House. We'll see if it comes about, but that's how I'm using my time. Now, the second thing that I'm pushing is a tax on the tax bill. My influence on the tax bill, thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this kind of lobbying, is this, that if you give your employees, and it's, it has to be a, a distribution of stock to the employees, if you give them stock in your company, they do not have to pay income tax on that stock, and if they keep it for 10 years, they don't have to pay capital gains to, on that stock, which means people who have startup companies, especially technology-related companies, and they've got a good idea, they can attract the top people because they know that stock's going to go way up in value if they succeed. So those are the type, and that would be a tremendous in, impulse to our, to our economy, to making sure America keeps ahead in terms of technology, but it also will mean employees will consider themselves partners with you rather than adversaries. And I think that that's a, a good spirit that we need to develop in our country. So those are the two things I'm pushing. I appreciate you recognizing that I, I try to be positive. I'm trying to be positive, and uh, let me just note... Uh, I've got a hat on here, Ben Carlson. You all know who Ben Carlson was? Ben Carlson was a lifeguard who saved, I think, about five people the day he died. And the day he died is because he went in to save a sixth person. And he was tired, and it was high surf. And this man gave his life to save people he didn't know. He was doing his duty. Well, let me tell you, we have a country filled with Ben Carlsons. They need to be appreciated. And I want you to know that the role that the Chamber of Commerce play and you play in giving employment and a tax base for us to be accomplishing the goals, the humane and wonderful goals of our country couldn't happen without a tax base that you help build or the good people like Ben Carlson create uh, a spirit of unity among us. So with that said, thank you very much. We are for Americans, we are for liberty, we are for freedom. We are going to show, as Ronald Reagan said, we're going to show that America is a shiny city on the hill so other people throughout the world will know we can have a better world. Thank you. All right, so uh, I'm here today in Costa, or in Newport Beach, uh, actually, and just listened to uh, Congressman Rohrbacher uh, get an award uh, here with, from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, he spoke today about um, 
uh, health care reform and tax reform. And on the health care reform issue, which is most interesting to me as a physician, um, for the first time uh, that I've ever heard this concept uh, of, of sort of taking the power of Medicare and applying it to the concern about pre-existing conditions and how uh, people with pre-existing conditions can sort of off-balance the uh, uh, insurance pools that we develop and utilizing a strategy along those lines to uh, see if there's a way that they can make the pools more uh, responsive to the markets and also kind of offload the, the concerns about pre-existing conditions.